Are you looking for a better way to organize your CDK projects? Then this video is for you. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a clean, scalable project structure with Lambda functions and API Gateway. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just getting started with cloud infrastructure, this guide will equip you with the knowledge that you need to organize your CDK applications. And here's the best part. This video was requested by one of you. So if you've ever felt overwhelmed by project setup or wondered how to structure your CDK projects, you're in the right place. Do you have a video or a topic that you'd like me to address? Let me know down in the comments. Hi, if you're new around here, my name is Ryan. I'm an AWS Certified Solutions Architect and Developer, and my goal is to teach you modern serverless system design using AWS. Let's jump in. Recently, I've found that my serverless CDK projects have been getting a little bit more complex, and I've been in need of finding a good folder structure in order to keep everything organized. The following is the result of my research and what I found works best for me. This is not necessarily meant to be a one size fits all folder structure for all CDK projects. However, I think that it's a really good starting point for particularly serverless projects and can be modified as needed. All this code will be in a repository that I'll have on my GitHub and I will link that down in the description. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so I'll just walk through this folder by folder and show you what I've done. So here in the bin folder, we haven't really changed anything. However, this is a really good spot if you wanted to define multiple stacks for each of your projects, you could do that. So if for some reason you didn't want to put all of your DynamoDB tables or your S3 buckets into your main stack that had your API gateway and your Lambda functions, you could just define a separate stack for it here. Another way that you could organize this too is you could separate it between static content that's not going to change a whole lot. This is usually like your DynamoDB tables, S3 buckets, things like that, with your more dynamic content that might be getting added to or removed from more frequently, such as like endpoints on your API gateway and your Lambda functions. The next thing you'll notice is that the lib folder has been renamed to stacks. I found that from a naming perspective, calling this stacks makes a little bit more sense since the different stacks that you're going to define in your bin here would all pull from this stacks folder. So I think this just makes a little bit more sense. Next thing you're going to notice that's different from the way that you normally initialize an application is I created this source folder. In this folder, you're going to have all of your code that's related to your stacks and your Lambda functions. I opted to create a different folder for every single AWS service that I'm going to use within my stack. In this case, I just have a DynamoDB folder and we can open that up and we can find that we have a base class that I created that extends the table v2 construct. This is useful if you want to create multiple of any given construct, but there's a lot of configuration that might be shared between each construct. So let's say I want the billing to be on demand for every single table. I can declare that here on the base class and then anytime I use this base DynamoDB table it will just assume that it's going to be on demand billing and then I can pass in something like the table name that I know is going to be different on every single table. I've also set this up to make sure that a partition key is created for every single table and it also has the option of creating a sort key but I don't have to pass it in if I don't want. And again, this is just for a DynamoDB table, but you could do this with S3 buckets, you could do this with Lambda functions, anything that you're gonna be repeating more than one of, it just helps to keep your code a little bit more dry when you actually go to define these resources in your stack. Next, I'll jump here into the Lambda folder and we can talk a little bit about this. The first is just gonna be the handlers. This is of course all of the functions that will be running every single time one of your endpoints is called. Next is gonna be our layers folder. This is just gonna have any of our shared packages that might be used across multiple Lambda functions. In the example, we just have the UUID package, but you could use this for Axios or anything like that. Next, we have the services folder here. This is, of course, going to be any services that are going to be shared across Lambda functions. So this could be Axios or communication with a database. Anything like that would go into the services folder. Finally, utils folder in this case just has the logger, but any utilities that you might want to use across Lambda functions. So now we can jump into the stack definition itself here, and we can see a little bit of this in action. So we can see we've got our layer that was created. Next, we have a Lambda function that's defined here that does have an environment variable of the log level, and that's getting passed into our logger here, but we could set different levels if we wanted like warn or critical failure or anything like that. Next, we have our API gateway definition here, and then we just have our Lambda function that is behind a single endpoint with a single method. Finally, we are importing our base DynamoDB table where we're just passing in the name as well as the partition key. So that about wraps up the video today. I'm interested to hear about how you structure your CDK projects, so just let me know down in the comments. And then please let me know down in the comments if there's any other videos that you wanna see me make on this channel. Thank you for watching.